morning. Namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's just take a moment to become present. Find a nice, comfortable seated position on a cushion or a towel, blanket, um, just so that your spine can be nice and long. The back of your neck can be nice and long. Opening up your chest, opening up your diaphragm, which will be particularly important today. And also every day, opening up your heart. So let's just uh, gently close our eyes and soften our thoughts. Soften our eyes. Soften our shoulders and soften our heart. Observe your breath as it is, soft and gentle, breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You may open your eyes now. For this morning's intention, you may think of a positive word or a phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. The intention this morning I'd like to explore is the fourth limb of yoga, which is pranayama. The first thing we do when we're born is take a breath. The last thing we do before we die is take a breath. Breathing is the source of life and we do it quite unconsciously. Our natural breath varies based on our physical, our mental, and our spiritual condition. Prana, the first part of pranayama, is Sanskrit for life force and yama is control. Pranayama starts with awareness and uses controls or techniques to have our breath guide us into well being. Pranayama is all about breathing consciously. We can use these techniques for yoga in our asana or meditation practices, or we can use them off the mat to reduce anxiety increase energy, or improve sleep. So for the next few moments, I'd like you to observe your natural breath. Just maybe close your eyes so you can really tune into it. And just observe how it feels in your body. <clears throat> what do you, do you observe? Do you observe that you're breathing through your nose or your mouth? Do you feel that your inhales are equal to your exhales? Do you feel the inhales might be a little choppy or maybe the exhales are a little choppy? So back to breathing through your nose and your mouth. I follow a yoga who once said, 
The nose is for breathing and the mouth is for eating. I thought that was quite clever. And surprisingly, not surprisingly, the American Lung Association agrees. The nostrils filters, warms and humidifies air in a way the mouth can't. It helps to regulate the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels and improves blood circulation. And do you breathe from your chest or do you breathe from your stomach? Did you observe where the primary source of your breath emanates from? Harvard Health claims that stomach breathing encourages full oxygen exchange. It slows the heartbeat and can lower or stabilize blood pressure. They suggest actually breathe, um, practicing a breathing technique five, 10 minutes a day. So here's one that's the most basic breathing technique. And again, with pranayama, it's about control breath, being aware of your breath. So um, when we're breathing normally, we actually only use about four to 7% of our lung capacity. Um, to make that a deeper breath, the Dirja Pranayama, which is um, Sanskrit for complete breath, um, and it's also known as the three-part breath, it uh, helps you to bring your breath from your chest down into your ribs and down into your stomach. And there's actually a mudra that helps to do that. I saw this with a woman who actually teaches breathing techniques and um, pranayamas. And she, um, I don't know, she developed it, but it actually, um, the feedback that I get, myself included, it actually works. So when you're sitting there with your palms open, as you may do either palms resting on your, your knees or palms up, um, you can feel your breath kind of up in your chest area. If you bring your index finger and your thumb together and take a couple breaths and see if that doesn't bring the breath down into your rib cage area. Maybe kind of release your fingers and then try them with the two touching. And then the third level for the complete or three-part breath is bringing your index finger and your middle finger to your thumbs. And just observe where that sends your breath. Maybe you're feeling that it's sending it all the way down into your stomach. And that's where you would like to have your breath on an ongoing basis. When it's all always up in your chest, you're in that fight or flight mode and your body releases chemicals. And to maintain that level of fight or flight all the time, is the chemicals aren't the good chemicals. They're not the ones that we want to have in our bodies all the time. But by bringing your breath all the way down in your stomach, there's that relaxation that takes over and you get out of that fight and flight mode. So let's be conscious of bringing our breath all the way through from the chest down to the ribs, down to the stomach, and then back up from the stomach to the ribs, to the chest today. And I will meet you on the mat. So for our asana practice, I'd like to start today with 
some shoulder shrugs. So we're just going to inhale as we lift our shoulders gently up toward our ears and exhale as we release them, bring them toward the back of our um, back of the room. <laughs> so our shoulder blades are coming together and then down toward the mat. And then inhale, we're gonna bring our shoulders up toward the front of the room and up toward our ears. So with this inhale and exhale, again, try to feel it coming from all the way up from your stomach to your ribs, to your chest. Maybe slow down the movements to really feel that connection, that um, control and awareness that we're looking for. You can reverse your shoulder too. You can just Shrug your shoulders in the opposite direction. Can relax your shoulders, come back to the natural seated position, basic seated pose. We're going to do a few seated side stretches. So bringing your fingertips down to the mat. We're going to lift our right arm up so that the arm is close to our, our right ear. And then we're going to take our left elbow and bend it so that it comes down toward the mat. And that will bring our torso into an arc form. And then inhale, coming back up. We'll do that on the other side. So bring your right fingertips to the mat. Left arm goes up alongside of your ear. And then elbow comes down toward the mat. Side stretching to the right. And then inhale, come back up again. We'll do it one more time each side. Right arm goes up, left elbow bends and goes down toward the mat. Side stretch to the left. Inhale, coming back up. Left arm goes up and right elbow goes down toward the mat. Inhale, back up. And come back. Then we'll do a few seated twists. We're going to take our right hand, place it on our left knee, send our left fingertips behind our hips, as close to your hips as is comfortable, twisting our torso over to the left, sending our gaze straight ahead, and taking a couple deep breaths. And then come back to center. We'll do that on the other side. So left hand goes to right knee. Right fingertips are behind your hips. Body twists to the right. Sending your gaze straight out ahead. Deep breaths. and come back to center. We come up into the tabletop position. So come up onto your hands and knees, bringing your wrists right below your shoulders. Hands, fingertips are splayed out, the index finger pointing to the top of the mat. And then just, um, be aware of the balance inside uh, your hands, equal weight distribution between the two hands. 
Knees are right below your hips. Navel's tucked to the spine, creating a nice flat back. And we'll do a few cat cows. We're gonna synchronize our breath to our movement. So exhale, rounding our back, dropping our head down and our tailbone down. And then inhale, lifting our head and tailbone up. Exhale, rounding our back, dropping our head and tailbone down for cat. Inhale up, lifting our head, tailbone up for cow. And then continue on at your own pace, really tuning in to your breath, synchronizing the movements to your breath. And come back to a neutral spine. We're going to sit back onto our heels with our tops of our feet on the floor. So that's into hero's pose. You can also um, have a variation of your toes tucked under, resting on your heels. Or if that either one of those are uncomfortable, you could just have your uh, knees maybe place a towel underneath your knees and have. Um, upright position this way. And I'm going to go back to hero's pose until they our fingers behind our back, behind our hips. And then we're going to ex inhale, sending our hands away from our hips. And exhale, bringing our interlaced fingers over to our right waistline. Inhale, bringing to the back again and away from our hips. Exhale over to the left waist. Inhale, extend them back away from our hips. Exhale, bring them over to the right hip, right waist. Inhale, extend them back. Exhale over to the left waistline. Inhale, extend them back. Exhale over to the right. One last time, inhale, extend back and release your fingertips and come back up into tabletop pose. We're gonna bring our knees together and send our right foot down to the bottom of the mat. And then take that right foot and move it over to the left side of the mat bringing your toes outside of the mat so that they're touching on the floor or your rug. And then we're gonna turn our head as if we're about to say no, you know, just kind of turn your head back and forth that you're saying no, and then turn it to the left and then gaze back to your right foot. And then bring that foot knee back. So the knees are back together. We're gonna to extend our left foot all the way down to the bottom of the mat. And then bring that left foot to the outer edge of the right side of the mat onto the floor or rug. Then making sure that you keep your weight evenly distributed in your hands. And then turn your head as if you're saying no over to the right and gaze back to your left foot. And bring that leg back. We'll do that one more time on each side. Extend your right foot back. Bring that right foot over to the left side of the mat, just outside the mat. 
keeping your weight evenly distributed in your hands. Turn your head to the left and then gaze back to your right foot. And then bring that leg back so the knees are together. Extend your left leg so your left foot's down at the bottom of the mat. Bring that left foot over to the right side of the mat so it's just outside the edge of the mat. And then gently turn your head as if you're saying no to the right. And then gaze back at your left foot. And then bring that knee back. So equally distributing your weight in your hands, just do a recheck on that. Your knees are together. I'm gonna go into bird dog. So extend your right leg up to hip height and then extend your left arm up to shoulder height. I'm gonna point our toes and inhale, then flex our foot and exhale. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. 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 And bring that leg and hand back down. We'll do that on the other side. And make sure that your hands are holding your weight evenly. Extend your left leg up to hip height. Extend your right arm up to shoulder height. Point, inhale, flex, exhale, 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 and bring both hand and knee back down. So we're going to, um, Actually, I think I'll do this standing up. So if you want to tuck your toes underneath, walk your hands back so that you come into a squat position and then push down to the balls of your feet to come up into mountain pose. And I'm gonna do between now and the end, two um, other breathing techniques and they're both called Veloma. And Veloma is Sanskrit for against the grain. And what it does is it enhances pauses between your breath. And it's really a great technique to bring breath control and breath awareness into being. So the first Veloma, it actually enhances the inhale and when we do this, there's going to be, this is the quiz part, um, there's going to be another pranayama that we've done before that's going to be very similar to this and see if you remember which one that is. But this one's called Paloma One, places the pauses on the inhale. So we're going to do an inhale, count one, two, and we're going to start with our stomach because again, we want to do that complete breath. Start with our stomach, inhale, one, two, pause. Then inhale up to our rib cage, pause. And then up to our chest, pause. And then slowly exhale back down. So stomach, inhale, pause, bring it up to the ribs, Pause, up to our chest, pause, and then slowly exhale. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 
Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. 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 Exhale. So we'll be doing the counterpart um, toward the end. So now that we're in mountain pose, let's go through the essentials of mountain pose, essentials of good posture. So first, let's just get grounded. We're going to lift our toes off the mat, spread them wide, then bring our toes back down to the mat, lift the heels off the mat, and bring the heels back down. Just feel connected, feel that grounding effect that that pose has. And then for the rest of the mountain, our legs are nice and straight and strong. There's always a soft bend in our knees. Our navels tuck to our spine. So that brings our, our torso in line with our hips and our shoulders. Our spine and back of our neck are nice and long. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Chin is just tucked ever so slightly toward our chest so that we're not doing our head out position, which I do. And then the crown of our head is flat and reaches up to the sky. And then take a deep inhale, exhale, bring our hands down to the mat as we bend our knees, supporting our lower back. Just check in, see if there's any tension. We can send deep, nourishing breaths to. Say that every week, but that's what pranayama is all about. It's a life force, but it's also a healing force. And then inhale, bringing our hands up to our shins, flattening out our back, sending our gaze down. And then exhale, bring the crown of our head down toward the mat, forward fold. Sweeping our hands, inhale all the way up, bringing our hands up above our head, coming up onto our tippy toes for palm tree. And just we'll sway here for a moment. Connect with our balance for today. Whoa. And then bring our heels back down to the mat, bring our hands all the way back down to the mat, bending our knees as we go. Inhale, lift our hands up to our shins, flattening out our back for half forward fold, dropping the crown of our head down toward the mat for forward fold. And sweeping our hands all the way up overhead, bringing our palms together, we're going to interlace our fingers and point the index fingers up toward the sky. Our arms should be alongside of our ears. I'm going to do a few side stretches. So we're going to tip over to the right, popping our left hip over toward the left. And just go as far as what's comfortable for you. And breath is a great indicator of how you're feeling in your pose. If your breath is shallow, then you wanna back off a little bit and get to that form where you can feel a nice deep breath all the way up from your stomach to your chest. Then we'll go over to the left side and go to find that sweet spot between effort and relaxation. And you'll know that by listening to your breath. And inhale, come back up again. One more time over to the right. And back up again. And one last time to the left. And inhale, come back up again. And exhale, we're gonna bring our hands all the way down to the mat, bending our knees as we go. Inhale, hands to our shins, flat back. Crown of our head then reaches down toward the mat for a forward fold. 
And inhale, sweeping our hands all the way up again, up overhead. Palms come together, palms come to heart center. And then we're going to send our hands straight out in front of us at shoulder height. And we do what I call the 180s. So we're going to bring our right hand in a semicircle all the way in back of us. And we follow that hand, right hand with our eyes. And our left hand just bends and comes and rests on our right shoulder. And then we're going to follow our right hand all the way back in that semicircle till they're both out in front of us again. And then we'll do that on the left side. So semicircle with your left hand, following your fingertips with your eyes, bringing your right hand to rest on your left shoulder. And then exhale, coming back to center. We'll do that one more time on each side. Semi-circle with your right hand. And then back again, exhaling, coming back to the front. Inhale with your left hand, following it with your eyes, your drishti point. And then come back to center. Lift our arms up overhead and then bring our hands back down to the ground. Inhale halfway up, flattening out our back, dropping our crown of our head down toward the floor, toward the mat. And then sweeping our hands all the way up again. Up overhead, palms come together, palms come to your heart center, then palms come to the back of your hips. We'll go into a supported back bend. So feet are half or hip width apart, fingertips are pointing down, shoulders are relaxed and rolled back, chin is tucked toward your chest, and then just gently drop your shoulders back. And listen to your breath. It'll tell you when you've hit that sweet spot. Make an adjustment. And then inhale, coming back up. So sweep our hands up overhead. And then exhale, bringing them all the way down to the mat, bending our knees. Then send both feet to the back of the mat, coming into plank. Wrists are right below our shoulders, fingertips spread wide apart. Heels are pushing to the back of the mat and your navel's tucked up toward your spine, elevating your hips slightly. Then we're gonna do chaturanga, either well, either knees, chest, chin, bring your knees, chest, and chin down, or chaturanga. And chaturanga, push off with your toes, propelling forward, keeping your elbows tucked to your side, come down, and then slowly land on the mat. We send both arms alongside of us, palms facing up, chin is resting gently on the mat. We'll do half locust into full locust. So we'll start with our right leg, lifting the right leg up. And then down, lifting the left leg up. And then down, then lifting both legs and both arms up. And then down. Bring your hands so that they're right below your shoulders and gently lift your chin and chest up and then gently push up coming into Cobra. Elbows are tucked toward your ribs. And 
and then push you and your hands coming up to tabletop and then lowering your hips down to child's pose. Arms out, extended. Take a few deep breaths here. And then come back up to tabletop. Tuck your toes under and lift your hips all the way up to downward dog. Arms are nice and straight and strong. Fingertips are laid apart. Index finger pointing to the top of the mat. Chest is reaching toward your thighs to elevate your hips slightly. And then your knees are bent or they could be pedaling. You could be walking your dog. We'll just do this for a few moments. And then on an inhale, we're gonna take our right knee and bring it to our right elbow, pushing off with our left toe. So inhale, bringing that knee to elbow. And then back to downward dog. Pedal out. On the next inhale, bring that knee to the elbow. And then back to downward dog, pedal out. And the third one, we're gonna bring our right foot between our hands. So inhale, bring your knee and your foot to the, toward the front of the mat so that your hands are framing your right foot. And we're gonna bring, this is runner's lunge, we're gonna bring our knee down to the mat, our left knee down to the mat, left foot, top of the foot down to the mat, and come into low lunge. So with our knee right above our, our right knee right above our right ankle, we're gonna push down into our right foot, lifting our chest and chin up, and then lifting our arms up to the sky. And then bring our hands back down to the mat. Tuck our back toes under, coming back into runner's lunge. We're gonna go into a high lunge, and you can either Come into a high lunge with your left toes being on the mat, or you can pivot your left foot so that the heel is on the mat as well. So we're gonna push down in our front leg, lifting up, and then bring our arms up to the sky. And then bring our arms down behind us, interlacing our fingers and pivot at the waist. I'm just gonna bend forward and extend our arms back. And listening to your breath, you release your hands, bringing them back down to the mat. Bring your right foot back. So you're back into runners, I mean, into a downward dog. Pedal out here for a moment. And then we take our right knee and bring it all the way up so that it lands on the mat just behind our right wrist, coming into pigeon pose. So your right leg, you can have your foot, um, right along, uh, follow a straight line of your thigh, do that. Or you can have your right foot bringing itself over as comfortably as it can over to the left side of the mat. So your, your shin area is at a diagonal. Then we're gonna take our left toes so that they are, the tops of the toes are on, um, laying on the mat and slide our left leg back down the mat, coming into pigeon pose. 
So we're gonna walk our hands back to accentuate our chest, puffing out like a pigeon. And then walk our hands down into recline pigeon. And you may want, if you're feeling tension in your right hip, you may want to put a blanket or a block cushion behind your right hip. And then we're going to bring our hands back up, back into pigeon, tuck our left toes under, lifting up, sending our right foot back to downward dog, and pedal out here for a moment again. And then we're going to walk our feet up to our hands, coming into forward fold. Then sweep our hands all the way up to the sky. Palms come together. Palms come to heart center. And then again, sweep our hands all the way up overhead. Big, big inhale. Exhale, bringing our hands back down to the mat. Bringing both feet to the bottom of the mat, coming into plank pose. Navels tucked to the spine. And we'll do knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga to come back down to the mat, keeping elbows tucked to the sides, either option, coming down to the mat. And then bringing our arms alongside of us, palms facing up to the sky. Your chin is gently resting on the mat. We'll do half locust and full locust. This time, lift your left leg up. And find that balance in your body. You're not twerking your body as you lift your leg up. And then bring your left leg down. Lift your right leg up. And lift, bring that back down. And then lift both legs and both arms up. and bring those back down. Bring your hands so that they're right below your shoulders. Lift your chin up, lifting your chest up, and then gently lifting up into cobra. Elbows are tucked toward your ribs. Pelvis is on the mat. And then pushing up to tabletop and then walking your hands so that your hips can lower onto your ankles coming into child's pose. Inhale, come back up to tabletop. Tuck your toes under. Lift your hips all the way up so that you're in downward dog. And we'll pedal out here for a moment. Just do a double check on your hands that your weight's evenly distributed in that. Your fingertips spread are apart. Arms are nice and straight and strong. Chest is reaching toward your thighs, sending your hips up to the sky. And then on an inhale, we're going to bring our left knee to our left elbow. So inhale, bring that now to the left elbow, pushing off of your right toes. And then back to downward dog, pedal out. And then on the next inhale, we'll do that again. So inhale, bring your left knee to your left elbow. Pushing off with your right toes. And then back to downward dog. And pedal out.
And then we're going to bring our left foot between our hands. So inhale, lift our left leg, bring it up between our hands. So our hands are framing our left foot. Coming into runner's lunge. We're going to send our right knee down to the mat, top of our right foot down to the mat. Making sure left knees over our left ankle. We're going to push down in our foot, lifting our head and chest up, and then lift our arms up to the sky. And then bring our hands back down to the mat. We tuck our back foot under, coming back into runner's lunge. We're going to come into high lunge. Or if you want, you can pivot your back foot so that your heel is on the mat and coming into a version of warrior one. So push down in your front foot, lifting up, bringing your hands up to the sky. And then we bring our hands down behind our back, interlacing our fingertips. And pivoting from the waist, leaning forward. So we're gazing down at our toes, extending our arms out back. And then bring our hands down to the mat. Sending our left foot back, coming back into downward dog, and pedal out here for a moment or two. Nice deep breaths. And we're going to bring our knees down to the mat. And cross our feet behind us and send our hips over our feet, coming into a seated position. And then we'll roll down on the back so that you feel every vertebrae as you go down. So you can do that one of now three ways. You have your knees bent, arms extended and roll back, or our legs straight, arms extended and roll back, or the express method is tucking your hands under your knees and quickly rolling back. Your choice. Kind of liking the legs extended one lately. <sighs> Bring your knees to your chest and give them a nice hug. Maybe rock your back back and forth. Give a little back massage. I'm going to interlace our fingertips and lace, put them over our left knee and extend our right leg out so that it's about a foot off the ground. Toes are flexed so their toes are pointing up toward the sky. And then we're going to lower our right heel down to the mat very, very slowly with control. And then inhale, lift it off the mat with control very slowly. And bring that knee back to your chest. Give both knees a nice hug. Well done, leg. And then interlace your hands around your right knee, extending your left knee, your left leg out, keeping it about a foot off the mat. Toes are flexed up to the sky. And then slowly with control, lower that left heel down toward the mat. And then inhale, lifting it up off the mat with control. And then bring your knee back to your chest. Give them both a nice gentle hug. We'll do that again on both sides. So interlace around the left knee. Extending your right leg all the way out, toes flexed, 
foot's about, or heel's about a foot off the ground. And then slowly lowering it down. And inhaling it back up. Bring that knee to the chest. Nice gentle hug. Interlace around your right knee. Extend your left leg out. Toes are flexed. Lowering the heel down to the mats ever so slowly. And then back up again. Bring back to your chest. Nice hug. And we bring both soles of our feet down to the mat. And spread your legs so they're about hip width apart. Bring our palms down to the mat. And see if you can touch the back of your heel with your fingertips. Or bring your heels closer to your hips. That's the idea. And we'll do a few um, cat cows and then we'll make our way into bridge pose. So the cat cows are going to do around our back. So our lower back really snug into the mat. Our pelvis is tilted up, creating like a bowl in our tummy. So that's the cat. And then the cow, we're just gonna tilt our pelvis down, arching our back up slightly. All the time, our hips are on the mat. So again, cat, we're gonna round our lower back. So it's really snug against the mat, creating a bowl in our tummy. And then exhale. We're going to um, tilt our pelvis down, arching our back for cow. So we'll do one more of that, rounding our back for cat, arching our back for cow. Then round our back, coming into cat pose. Push down into your feet, lifting your hips up toward the sky coming into bridge pose. So your knees are parallel with one another, not splayed apart. Your eyes are gazing up to the sky. Your shoulders are nice and snug on the mat. And then we're slowly lower our body, feeling each vertebrae as it comes down to the mat. Do a few more cat cows. So we're going to round our back, creating that bowl for cat, arching our back for cow, rounding our back for cat, pelvis is tilted up, arching our back, pelvis tilting down for cow, rounding our back for cat, and pushing down into our feet, lifting up again. Coming into bridge pose, knees are parallel, back is arched. And then slowly come down, feeling every vertebrae as you come down. And we'll do that one last time. So cat, we're back rounded. Cow, back arched. Cat, back rounded. Cow, back arched. Cat, back rounded, and then pushing down into our feet, lifting our hips up toward the sky. Knees are parallel with one another, not splayed apart. And if you feel inclined, you can interlace your fingers behind your back underneath your hips, and maybe roll your shoulders a little bit more under, creating even a deeper arch. Make sure your knees stay parallel. And then slowly, one vertebrae at a time, lower back down to the mat. All right. So bring your, your 
uh, pinky toes out to the edges of the mat and just let your knees gently rest together. And we'll do the Veloma two as promised. So Veloma one was about pausing the inhale. And as, as we did that, energy was rising up our spine as we inhale. You feel that energy rising up our spine, which was good to do at the beginning of our class. Now we're gonna do the opposite. Veloma two is about pausing on the exhale. So we're gonna feel that relaxation come down our spine. So the inhale is one slow breath. And then on the exhale, we're going to exhale from the chest, pause, exhale from the ribs, pause, and then exhale from the stomach, pause. So inhale, deep one deep breath, slowly. Feel that your stomach and your ribs and your chest are all full. And then exhale from the chest. Pause, exhale from the ribs, pause, exhale from the stomach, pause. And again, Volam is all about breath awareness and breath control. So let's do that a couple of times and then I'm gonna be quiet and see how you feel um, doing it without me yakking. So inhale. Exhale from the chest, pause. Exhale from the ribs, pause. Exhale from the stomach, pause. One deep, big inhale. Exhale from the chest, pause. Exhale from the ribs, pause. Exhale from the stomach, pause. And you're on your own. You feel that relaxation all along the energy channels of your spine. And one last time, and then you can prepare yourself for Shavasana. Extend your feet out to the corners of the mat. Just let them flop open. You've already done a nice warm up to relaxation. Just continue that. Relaxing every muscle and bone in your body letting the mat just absorb your body like it's a cloud. Today's poem is Breathe In by Dana Falls. Breathe in spaciousness and acceptance of what is. Breathe out resistance. Breathe in possibility and optimism. Breathe out fear and doubt. Breathe in ease. 
breathe out the need to change the way this moment is unfolding. Breathe in the certainty that what we really are is so much bigger than pain and suffering. Breathe out limitation and conditioning. Breathe in divinity and openness. Breathe out a prayer of thanks that even in the midst of difficulty, there is awareness. <laughs> 